Hi, I'm Jamie from Not So Be Teacher, and this is the second video in my math series. This series is all about how to teach math using the math workshop model. So in my last video, I kind of went over what the math workshop model was and why I loved using it in my classroom. And today, we're going to talk about one of the big components of math workshop, which is the mini lesson or the whole group lesson. Okay, lots of us have experience with just teaching math whole group and spending our whole math hour whole group. That can be so boring to our students, especially our lowest learners who don't understand the skills and are getting bored, and our highest learners who didn't need an hour to understand the skills, so they're getting bored. So we're losing like two thirds of our class just like that. By using a math workshop model, we're speeding up that mini lesson, which is actually helping to keep our behaviors intact. We don't have as much time to chat. We don't have a lot of transitions. And it helps us to get to small group time, which is where all the magic really happens because that's when we're able to give differentiated content and teach students right where they're at, okay? So let's talk about this mini lesson. This is a review from the last video. Just to give you a reminder, the mini lesson is about 20 to 30 minutes. The small group and center time is about 40 to 60 minutes. So you can see it's twice as long as your mini lesson time. The bulk of your math instruction should be spent to small groups with the smaller amount being the mini whole group lesson. And then a little share time at the end. So today we're gonna to focus on that mini lesson. The next video will be about the small groups and then we'll move on to centers, which is my very favorite part. You do need about 60 to 90 minutes to make a successful math workshop, at least 60. 60 will work, 90 is a gift and you'll love it. Less than 60 and I really think you don't have quite enough time for math and might need to relook at that schedule if possible. The important thing about teaching in a workshop model is really making sure you have the right mindset. If you used to teach all of your lesson whole group, then you're really going to have to reprogram your mind to think of this whole group lesson, this mini lesson, as just the introduction to the skill. All of your students are not going to master the skill during this lesson. And that's okay because you're only giving them part of the lesson right now. They'll receive the rest of the lesson in their small group. So it's okay if at the end of the lesson you still have some faces that look confused. And that can be tricky for us as teachers to get past. But we have to understand that this small group is the time, or this mini lesson is the time where we're introducing a skill or vocabulary or a strategy but when we're really gonna get to practice it and dig deep is coming soon. I do think it's still important to have a whole group lesson. Some people like to just teach all small group. I think you end up repeating yourself too many times because there's certain things every student still needs to hear regardless of their level. And if you have to repeat it for every single group, I actually think that's taking up more time and giving you less time to differentiate. So I think a whole group lesson is important, but it still needs to be mini and it still needs to be thought of as just the introduction to the skill, okay? This is key. Use your math curriculum that you've been given. You don't have to create something all new. Your school probably has some sort of curriculum that they've given you or required of you, and that's fine. I think any curriculum will work. It's okay, whichever curriculum you use, no matter what um, problems you might find with your curriculum. I think when you start teaching in a workshop model and you add in those centers and you add in that differentiation, that it's going to make your curriculum feel much more manageable. All right, I used Eureka or Engage New York, which is a pretty tricky curriculum. I love it, but it's, it's big and I could still use it in a workshop model, so it's possible. But use the curriculum, don't create something totally different because that's just gonna take so much of your time. The key is, that you're not gonna get through the whole lesson. Your curriculum is probably designed to be like a 60 minute whole group lesson. You're gonna kind of go through and highlight what you're gonna do whole group, the rest of it will become your small group lesson. So you're just splitting it up into two different ways that you're going to be delivering. So keep that in mind, you're not gonna get through the whole lesson whole group, but there's no reason you can't start there. Okay. 
All right, let's look at some things that you might do during your whole group lesson. And remember, you have different students than me. You have a different classroom, different curriculum. So you might need to make some little changes to make it work for you. One thing you might do, you might have a little warm up. Warm up for me was often skip counting or a math fact quick practice. You might have a review problem. My curriculum started with like a review problem. And so often I'd start math workshop with a couple minutes of skip counting and then a review problem. Keep this quick. Your mini lesson is so um, short. Keep this quick by making sure if you're gonna use a review problem that you have it ready to um, project onto your board as soon as you need it. Not having to write it out if it's not something that's already typed, then type it out ahead of time. If it's coming straight from your curriculum, then just have it ready to display so you don't have to search through a website to try to find it while the kids are waiting. You don't have time. So before school starts or you know while they're at recess, make sure you've pulled up these sites or a document that has the problem listed so that you can really quick review or warm up. Then, you'll probably need to model a new skill or strategy that comes from your lesson. So you are up at the board and your students are either on the carpet or in their desks, whatever works for you, and you are modeling that skill in front of them. And you think aloud so that they can hear your mathematical thinking while you're doing what you're doing. And they're watching you. Also during this time, you might be introducing some new vocabulary. A lot of lessons include new vocabulary. I like to be able to tell them or show them. I'm on the board and I'm showing them. And so this is the perimeter. It is the distance around the shape. Try to tell your partner what the perimeter is. Immediately your kids turn and they go, the perimeter is the distance around the shape. Okay, and then turn back. There's the engagement right there, but speaking also helps. Gestures help too, if you um, can add those into some of your definitions. So this, you've, you've kind of warmed up, you've modeled a skill once or twice on the board, you've introduced any new vocabulary you needed to. Now it's time for the student practice time. This has to be quick. And there's many different ways that teachers do this. You'll have to decide what works best for you. Perhaps your students are practicing on whiteboards. You could be display the practice or problem set that comes with your curriculum onto the board and circle which problems you want them to do. Have them do it on the whiteboards, have them do it with a partner, have them discuss it with a partner, or just have them do the problem, and then the class discusses together the strategies they used. Um, I liked to print my problem set out. Uh, I didn't actually have carpet space where my students could sit and still see the board. It was unfortunate, but my classroom was very tiny. But I did print out their problem sets. Here's the thing, guys. They don't have to complete the entire problem set. I feel like we have it in our head that they need to, and I get messages all the time going, but how are they going to finish the whole problem set if they only have 10 minutes? They're not. And that's okay. I mean, some might. Some of your highest learners might. That's okay. That's kind of how you're differentiating, if you think about it. You want to look at how your problem sets are organized. With Eureka Engaged New York, which is what my school used, it started off simple and gradually got more and more challenging to where actually the bottom problems exceeded the standards and skills for the grade level. So when I was actually listening to someone who helped write the curriculum, they said they did not ever intend that the whole class would get through the entire problem set every day, that those bottom problems were actually meant to be an extension and a challenge for those students who needed it and were ready for it. And if you only gave them 10 minutes, only those students would ever get to the bottom. Because if you weren't really certain of the skill, it was going to take you longer up at the top. And so that's differentiation. Maybe my lowest learners are only going to get through the top. Some of my, my middle learners might get to the middle of the page, or three-fourths of the page. My highest learners might be giving a stab at those challenging problems at the bottom. But look at yours. Maybe yours is more by skill. Like you kind of have more math fact problems than word problems. So tell them you want them to do two in each section. And then they can go back and complete a section if they have time. Be okay with them not finishing the problem set, especially during the mini lesson. One thing you can have them do is put the, mini, the problem set, if you print it out, have them put the problem set in a math folder and have them carry that math folder to small group so you can continue to work on it during small group with your individualized attention with manipulatives. As far as going over the problems on the problem set, you're probably not going to be able to go over every single one of them. As they're working on the problem set, walk around and notice, well, okay, number one and two, my friends are really good with number one and two. So don't spend class time going over them. They already got it. 
If you start noticing some challenges at problem number three, maybe that's what you need to do. Go up to the board, work on problem number three in front of the class, and then tell the students. Turn and tell your partner what strategy I used to solve this problem. So now they've got to look at your work, determine how you solved it, and tell their partner. They're learning. And then you can say, now look at your work. Do you need to make any changes? Did you have any errors? By going over that one problem, you've helped them grow. You didn't go over the whole sheet. That's okay. Many lessons, the introduction. You've introduced a new skill. You can continue this discussion during small groups when you're able to speak right at their level. Okay, when you have the manipulatives in front of you. You don't have to do it all right now. All right, these are some don'ts, but they're my don'ts, and if you want to still do them, and, you may, and they work in your classroom, then so be it. Remember that this is just some things that along the way didn't work out for me. Be careful about spending too much time on review. We tend to get caught up in it. I do not use file review worksheets for this reason because they never match my curriculum and therefore I'm having to do many lessons to teach them how to do the spiral review, which means it's not a spiral review anymore and it starts to take 30 minutes to do the five problems. That's too long when I only have 30 minutes to teach a whole new lesson. So if you're starting your mini lesson off with a review, make sure you're keeping it short. I love to do skip counting because we're learning multiplication in third grade. I love to do a real quick uh, math act timed um, exercise with them. But whatever you're doing, maybe you need to have a little stopwatch or something so that you know that I, I can't spend more than five minutes reviewing. Okay? I don't recommend giving your students manipulatives during the mini lesson. Now, don't get me wrong. I love math manipulatives. I use them every day when I was teaching, but not during my mini lesson time. I don't give the students the manipulatives until small group. Mostly, this is a huge time saver. By even if you have them all in little baggies for individual students, you're passing them out, they're getting them out, they're using them, you're not sure if they've used them correctly because it's hard to watch 25 people use manipulatives at the same time. And they still have to put them away. And I feel like that takes up, that eats into your time considerably. Now, if I need to use manipulatives when I'm modeling my skill, I might use digital manipulatives or magnetic manipulatives on the board in front of my students. Or I have to draw a picture if, I, if that's not possible and I just draw a picture. That's fine, but passing them all out and having students use them at this time can be a time waster. They will get time to use the manipulatives during small group, and that's partially why small group is so magical, is because of the manipulatives. So I'll talk about that more in my next video. Don't feel like you should spend the entire or a lot of time during your small group assessing. Remember, this is only your introduction. So if you are hard on yourself and you're assessing kids and going, whoa, Johnny's got it wrong and Betty's got it wrong. You're going to feel like you're not doing a very good job teaching, but you don't assess after the introduction. They haven't completed the lesson. So although we're always gauging where our students are at so we can determine what speed to teach at, know that this is just the beginning. It's not the end of the lesson yet. So don't feel like you're going to assess throughout the whole lesson or you might be discouraged. We don't want that. This is tricky for us teachers, especially me. Don't talk too much. You might want to rehearse those mini lessons, maybe tape them and listen back. We tend to talk a lot. We tend to repeat ourselves a lot. It's just, it's just part of who we are. So, if you spend a lot of time chatting during your lesson, you're going to lose out on so much of the time that you could be spending modeling or having your students practice, which is more important. So get them doing some of the talking by doing pair shares and make sure you try and eliminate some of that repetitiveness and definitely eliminate anything that's off task. At the beginning, I do recommend rehearsing these lessons until you feel more comfortable with the timing. The next one is super, super tricky. Don't move at the pace of your lowest learner. And this is so hard for us as teachers. We're looking at that lowest learner and we're wanting so badly for them to understand. And when they have the confused look on their face, we do another example. And when they still look confused, we try explaining it another way. And we just keep looking at them, waiting for their aha moment. We can't move at that pace during the mini lesson. 
waiting for their aha moment means we're losing the rest of the class and we're taking so much time before getting to those small groups where all that magic is going to happen. I'm not saying we should not teach to that child by any means. It may be important to let them know that you will help them during small group. Hey, Billy, do those math lessons, do they sometimes confuse you? Do they get you a little discouraged? Well, I just want you to know that I will be meeting with you in small groups every week and I'm going to help you. So if you feel a little bit lost during the whole group lesson, I don't want you to get frustrated. Just try your best and then I will help you. Move at the pace of at least your medium, your on-level learners. Sometimes you may even need to move it even a little bit faster than they are used to. So this is only the introduction. When you're going to be able to move at the pace of the lear of your learners, right? The pace that you really need is during small group. And that's why math workshop is so amazing is because when we did everything whole group, we were always moving at the pace of just one type of learner, whether it was our slowest learner or on level learner or high learner, we were always missing about two thirds of our class. And by doing the math workshop model, yes, we're going to move faster in the mini lesson, but then every small group's right where you need it to be. And that's going to help our students to move forward and to grow. So I hope that these tips, these ideas um, are helpful to you. And I can't wait until we can talk about small groups, those magical small groups in all of our centers uh, in my next videos. So see you then. Bye.